sometimes finding the slope can be difficult. And I don't mean difficult because like you can't subtract numbers, but you forget like we're bombarded with all these different definitions of what is a slope, let rise over the run, like change in Y over change in X, delta at delta Y over delta X, um, you know, Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. And you're given a problem or on your test or on your homework and you're like, crap, I forgot. Like, I don't know how to do this. And one thing I don't want you to do is just give up because I see it time and time again, students know what they're doing um, and, and they understand the concept, but like with stress or frustrations and, or maybe they just, you know, have like a brain fart and they like just don't know what to do. And so they just give up. They don't answer the question or um, they just kind of feel frustrated and they stop doing their work. And I don't want you to do that. So in this video, what I want to do is give you two different ways to approach finding the slope. Okay. And this is hopefully will work, um, will be very beneficial to those of you that kind of like are easy to forget things and easy to like, be like, I don't remember what I'm supposed to do or, you know, what the relationship is of slope. So the main thing I want you to do is because if you're at this point of learning or talking about slope, you, you've probably been, you've probably been taught how to plot points, right? And so remember plotting points, we can plot points on a X, Y axis. So that's exactly where I am going to start. Okay. So I'm going to say, all right, that is my Y axis. And then here is going to be my x-axis. Okay, now again, remember when we're plotting point on x, y axis, we're just gonna use, you know, remember the first point represents the x-coordinate and y represents the y-coordinate. So if I was gonna plot this like x, y, I'm gonna go over two and then up three, one, two, three. And if I was gonna plot this point as an x, y, I would go over nine, up seven. So over nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and hmm, let's see if I can do this correctly. I want to move this down a little bit. There you go. All right. So let's go ahead and label this as point A and point B. Okay, because when we're trying to find the slope, what we're trying to what we're trying to identify is the change that we need to go through, the change in our x and our y coordinates to go from a to b. Now you could say the change from a to b, or you could say the change from b to a. It doesn't really matter. For the sake of simplicity in this video, um, I am going to kind of go back. I'm going to kind of show you both ways, but I'll start with going from a to b, right? Because these are not the same coordinate points. You can agree. To go from a to b, we need to go up and we need to go over. Well, how far up and how far over? So let's go and take a look. So we need to go vertically. We need to go up one, two, th so one, two, three, four. And how far do we need to go over? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So that's exactly the slope. The slope, if you remember, is your vertical change and your horizontal change. Now, again, a lot of times what we call that, right, guys, if you remember, that's going to be your rise over your run but sometimes it's confusing rise or run because we're not always rising, <laughs> right? But anyways, it's the vertical over the horizontal. So all you're simply gonna do is take your four over the seven and that's your slope, done. Now, as I mentioned, we could also go in the other direction. So it is important to say, well, what if you're talking about B to A or like the problem that you're dealing with is like to go from B to A? Well, again, just like follow, like what is my vertical change? So now in this case, I need to go down four and then I need to go to the left seven, right? So you could go down and to the left. And actually, let me put some arrows there. That might be helpful. You can also go up and to the right. Now let's go and take a look at this slope, right? So this one would be a negative four over a negative seven, right? The change vertically is negative four and the change horizontally is negative seven. Well, guess what that equals? That's still a four over seven, guys. So that's good, okay? So the important thing I want you to understand is like, what exactly am I doing here? Like it's easy to count, but the problem with when we're trying to find slope or as you might encounter, you know, sometimes not all your points are like so easy to be able to like plot. You can't just like always plot, you know, for instance, irrational numbers um, or, you know, fractions it might be very difficult for you to be able to find the slope. So what I want to do is kind of say like, all right, well, like if you can't count, you know, you can't plot them and count, like what is another way that we can fall back on? Because what I want you to see in this example is I actually have this point A like labeled here, I have this labeled as an XY. Well, let's do this as an XY. And this point B is also labeled as an XY. Now to differentiate them, I could say this is going to be an X1, Y1. And this one is going to be an X2, Y2. Okay, so we can differentiate them. Now, again, if I wanna say like, what is the difference? What am I going vertically? Like, how do I, how do I understand what that vertical changes? So let's go and take a look at it. From here to here, 
how far vertically did I go? Now, again, you can count, or you could also say, here's Y2 and here's the Y1 coordinate, right? To find that change vertically, I can just take a Y2 and subtract it from Y1, right? Because what was that value, right? It was seven, was it, uh, uh, yeah, seven minus what a one, two, three, seven minus three, which is equal to a four, which is exactly what we got right there. Now, what about the horizontal change? Well, that was going to be from here, go to here, here to here, right? Now, again, this is going to represent my X one and this represents my X two. So if I want to find the difference, yeah, you can count, but what's another way you can do that? You can just say X two minus an X one. Now, what was my X two, right? That value was a nine. And then we subtracted it from a two, which equals not that way, which equal to seven, which is exactly what we got here, right? That's going to be your seven from there. So what I want you to understand is like when you can't count, we can also fall back on this formula, which again is like the formula that I think all students should aspire to remember and kind of keep in their back pocket. But the slope is rise of run. It's easy to plot it, graph it. That's good. But don't, you know, please also don't forget about y2 minus y1 all over at x2 minus an x1, or at least try to use it as often as possible. So therefore you can quickly remember it because I don't want you to rely on like, oh, I have to graph it and count, right? That's kind of our fundamental way to make sure we can understand things. But for the sake of time and for the sake of understanding, we also want to make sure we can quickly be able to find the slope using this method as well. So in this case, all we simply do is just label this as x1, y1, and label this as an x2, y2. And then you just take your coordinate points and you just plug them in. So it's a seven minus a three. Now we already calculated this, but I want to go through it as well. And therefore that's gonna be a nine minus a two. And what we get here is a four over a seven. And there you go. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.